Yangtze River runs eastward for 3,800 kilometers before reaching the Three Gorges. After it passes the gorges, it flows onwards to Wuhan City, located on the Jianghan Plain, known as the home of fish and rice. Over a century ago, the Japanese called Wuhan the Chicago of the East. After the river runs past Wuhan, it passes Zhoujiang, Anqing, Wuhu, and Nanjing before reaching China's most advanced city and the world's largest port, Shanghai, a city once called by Westerners the Paris of the Orient. Some 70 years ago, a type of folk opera from the Anhui countryside by chance attracted the curiosity of people living in Shanghai. We're about to hear a fragment of the older version of the Huangmei opera, The Heavenly Match, as recorded in 1986. The singer was an 87-year-old man named Zhu Guanghua. His name was closely connected with the Shuangxi opera troupe, the longest existing Huangmei opera troupe in history. It was January the 24th, 1936, the first day of the Spring Festival, according to the lunar calendar. Even though it was already the 25th year after the Republic of China had been established, Spring Festival, or the Chinese New Year, was still considered the most important holiday to the Chinese people. And during the Spring Festival, children could light fireworks and crackers as often as they wanted to. In Zhou Mudi, a small area south of Shanghai, a strain of Huang Mei song could be heard amidst the smoke in the wake of the fireworks. On the second floor of the Shulu Tea House, a venue large enough to accommodate an audience of 200, the Huang Mei opera Tale of a Silk Handkerchief was being performed. It was the first time that Huang Mei opera had been performed publicly in Shanghai. This coincided with a conference on the Shanghai Film World, in which the slogan of National Defense Films was first raised. In the same year, Japan decided in its own cabinet conference to increase troops in the northeast provinces of China. These troops replaced the Kwantung Army stationed in China and became the advanced troops of Japan for the invasion of China. Inspired by the slogan National Defense Films, the Shanghai film industry made the anti-Japanese film Bloodshed on Wolf Mountain. War was imminent. After the film Bloodshed on Wolf Mountain was premiered, copies were released to cities along the Yangtze River, and they soon arrived in Anqing, capital of Anhui province. In Anqing City, new films were screened in theaters just one month after Nanjing and Shanghai. In the previous year, Anqing was afflicted with a serious drought. The poor harvest caused a serious food shortage, and this forced many peasants to seek refuge away from their hometown. Six peasant Huang Mei song singers packed their simple luggage and began their journey to seek refuge farther down the Yangtze River. Along the way, they held performances to earn food for a living. Some of them were lead singers, and some were responsible for the development of Da Tsai or Tao Tsai, a type of performance where players interacted with the audience. Chang 
或者唱一些吉祥的话。这样一恭维了母先生，母先生就高兴了，就掏那个硬币，就是二十文的铜板，就往台上去，嗯，砸，往台上送，这叫打彩。Dao Zai had existed for over a hundred years as a unique performance art. Today, in areas along the Yangtze River, many folk Wangmei opera troupes have intervals for Dao Zai in the middle of their operas. The income earned from Dao Zai is quite often higher than the fixed salary for performing. Over a month later, six refugees appeared in an alley in the French concession in Shanghai. They performed Wang Mei opera in that alley, but the only income they received was through the outside. Surprisingly, their income was much higher than they expected. They earned nearly 20 silver dollars a day on average, half a month's income for an average worker. At the time, a silver dollar could purchase two and a half kilos of pork. The troop was watched over by a businessman who had an idea. There was a tailor's shop near Jiao Mu Di in southern Shanghai. The owner of the shop was Xu Lao Xiao, a man from Tungcheng in Anhui Province. When the six refugees came to Shanghai, they first settled in Xu Lao Xiao's home, and he helped them to take care of their income. Soon, Xu Lao Xiao realized that this was a good way to make money. And he considered hiring a professional opera troupe from his hometown to perform in Shanghai. In the winter of 1935, Xu Laoxiao boarded a ship heading back to Tungcheng. Four years before, Wang Mei opera troupes had entered Anqing for a second time. Since then. Wang Mei opera had been seen often in theatres in the city, but for most Wang Mei opera artists, activities were restricted to the countryside. At the time, the most popular Wang Mei opera troupe was the Shuangxi troupe, with Zhu Guanghua as lead singer. By 1920, Zhu Guanghua had already established this opera troupe and recruited many Hui opera actors. Purchasing the second-hand costumes that the Wei opera troops had used, even though the costumes were old, they looked much better than the shabby costumes made of paper and cloth used by the other Wang Mei opera troops. Before their performances of Wang Mei opera, the Shuangxi troupe would always perform a few Wei operas. Zhu Guanghua, they just in the Wei. 表演艺术里吸收了大量的城市性的表演动作。呃，因为这个会调跟华美调艺人是同台的，所以这样的休息也有主动休息，也有潜移默化的。比如说出场，比如说行走，这个都要跟会调的城市化动作来操作，以至于现在的华美戏还保留了。当年大量从徽调和高腔中休息来的舞台表演艺术。Thanks to Zhu Guanghua's efforts over the years, the Shuangxi Opera Troupe became very popular on both sides of the Yangtze River. It became the most famous professional Wang Mei Opera Troupe, and it had the most performing opportunities. The first Wang Mei Opera Troupe in recorded history. Was the private troupe of Prince Yin, otherwise known as Qian Yucheng, under the Kingdom of Heavenly Peace? By the end of the Qing Dynasty, there were more than 20 Wang Mei opera troupes in these six counties under the administration of An Qing. The Xiao Ba Ya troupe was established in 1911, and that was the last Wang Mei opera troupe founded in the Qing Dynasty. After the Republic of China was founded, a large number of Wang Mei opera troupes were established. In fact. There was a poem describing how popular Wang Mei opera was in Huaining. It goes, "Walk a couple of miles away from home, and you'll hear the music of the Yellow Plum Opera 
everywhere. These country troops mostly consisted of peasant players who were organised to perform in the countryside. During the busy farming season, they would focus on their farm work, but during the slack season or on holidays or at temple fairs, weddings or funerals, they'd be organised to sing operas. Their audience was generally the local peasantry. They usually performed on open-air stages nicknamed grass stages, and for this reason, they were often called grass stage performers. In the book Anhui Actors Record, published by the Shanghai Bookstore, it is written that throughout the various villages of Anhui Province, or on the southern bank of the Yangtze River, there were many country opera troupes. What they sang was generally Wang Mei Song. In 1952, Wang Mei Song was formally renamed Wang Mei Opera. Today, there are still many Huang Mei opera troops of this kind all along the Yangtze River. The troops are usually humble in size, but they perform actively in the countryside. The Shuangxi troop is one of the very few professional Huang Mei opera troops of a large size and high artistic talent. Zhu Guanghua, as head of the troupe, was famous in the counties on the north side of the Yangtze River. On winter mornings, the bells of Yingjiang Temple toll and resound over the Yangtze River across the ancient city of Zongyang. As the morning fog fades away, the dock begins to busy as the sun rises. Back at his hometown of Tungcheng, Xu Laoxiao was told that the Shuangxi Opera Troupe was the most famous in the area. He found a way to meet with Zhu Guanghua and explain to him how prosperous Shanghai was. At the time, the population of Shanghai was already up to 3.5 million. The monthly living expenses in Shanghai were twice that of Tokyo. Most modern fashions from France and the newest films from Hollywood would be released there simultaneously. And it was hard to imagine that just 30 years before this international metropolis was only a third-class county called the Paris of the Orient. Shanghai was listed among the top cities of the world, with London, New York, Tokyo, and Berlin. Many people made their way to Shanghai for dreams of making a huge fortune. When 36-year-old Zhu Guanghua heard about the prosperity of Shanghai from Xu Laoxiao, he immediately decided to go there with his opera troupe. To guarantee his success, he invited Ding Yongchuan, the Huang Mei opera actor who was famous all over the northern side of the Yangtze River, to go with him and perform with his troupe. He planned to make their debut during the coming Spring Festival. Shanghai. The city at the end of the Yangtze River gave Zhu Guanghua high hopes for the future. And so, a group of early Huang Mei opera stars gathered on the dock outside Anqing City. Back in those days, they called their tours running between docks, and in their mind, Shanghai would be the most important dock of their lives. But just before their departure. They discovered something disappointing. They didn't have enough money to purchase the steamer tickets. The 
number of passengers to Wuhan going upstream was small, but tickets to Nanjing and Shanghai downstream were very difficult to get. A single trip steamer ticket from Anqing to Shanghai was about four silver dollars, a large sum for Huang Mei opera actors with a limited income. At the time, a well-known Huang Mei opera Hua Dan actor with the highest pay could make two silver dollars a day, but others got paid much less. Due to the continuous droughts in Anqing, the Huang Mei opera artists' income had been affected. Many of them were being paid in goods instead of cash. Juguanhua stood on the dock watching the steamer drifting away. He had to figure out a solution and how to get to Shanghai in an affordable way. So 朱 Guanghua and Ding Yongchuan snuck aboard two different steamers and finally arrived at Shu Liopu Dock in Shanghai on January the 23rd, 1936. When they arrived, it was the eve of Chinese New Year. Zhu Guanghua and Ding Yongchuan decided to give their premiere performance the next day, the first day of Chinese New Year. The venue decided on was the second floor of the Shu Le Tea House at Jiao Mu Di. Jiao Mu Di was a place where many old theatres were concentrated. In 1908, the Dan Gui Tea House Theatre, Shanghai's largest theatre, was moved here. Five years after that, it was modified to become a new venue for modern dramas. And so Zhu Guanghua and the Shuangxi Opera Troupe began to perform in the Shu Le Tea House at Yeo Mu Di, Shanghai. Their opening opera was Tale of a Silk Handkerchief. Audience reaction to the opening performance was positive. Everyone felt that Huang Mei Opera was easy to understand. Over the following days, the opera troupe performed Pearl Pagoda and other traditional operas. The house was 70 to 80 percent full, and the box office income was about 10 silver dollars per show. Jingle 
When the troop first arrived in Shanghai, their daily income was just about enough to meet their minimum living needs, so the actors got no pay in cash. The opera artists had no objection about this in the beginning, however, as they understood it took time for them to settle in. However, they did feel embarrassed about having to act in filthy rural costumes in such a city of fashion. Hongxi 就把它接过来, On the tenth day of the Spring Festival, two Huang Mei song actors came to Shanghai. After watching the performance, they suggested that the mini operas could easily please the audience even without brilliant costumes. So they decided to program a show beginning on the ensuing Lantern Festival. The show consisted of the mini operas that each specially please the audience even without brilliant costumes. So they decided to program a show beginning on the ensuing Lantern Festival. The show consisted of the mini operas they each specialized in, including Celebrating the Lantern Festival, Date at the West Wing, Liu Tung Band's Three Tricks on White Peony, Spring Picnic, and Mrs. Her's Advice to Her Sister-in-Law. As soon as the new program was decided upon, they put out posters. Surprisingly, the Lantern Festival show attracted a far bigger audience than they expected. As the Shanghai audience had never seen many operas like this, they swarmed into the theatres to enjoy a new experience. The troupe's box office income was nearly double their expectations. When residents of Shanghai, who were originally from Anhui, heard the news about their hometown opera being performed in Jiao Mu Di, they all came to experience the nostalgia. Before the first performance, the Shulu Tea House applied for a license to arrange 200 seats in the theater. But after the show began, they had to increase the number of seats to 400. But still, that was not enough to meet the needs of the audience. And in order to solve the problem of seat shortage, they decided to add another show in the daytime. Such a huge crowd soon attracted protests from the stores downstairs of the Shulu Tea House and the businessman there decided to sue the opera troupe. It was at this moment that another businessman from Tongchang heard of the success of the Huang Mei opera troupe, and he invited them to perform in a much bigger tea house in Lu Jiabang. In this tea house, there was another troupe who sang Xiaoxing opera. At Lu Jiabang, the income of the opera troupe increased, but still, none of the actors received any share of the income. After performing continuously for such a long time, Many of them were simply exhausted, and some began to complain. One day after a show, Ding Yongchuan walked with Zhu Guanghua and suggested that everyone be given leave for one day during the Dragon Boat Festival, and also given a little money to buy something for their personal use. At that moment, Zhu Guanghua looked around and observed that everybody was still in the clothes they wore when they left Anhui province, and that they were totally out of season. Zhu Guanghua accepted Ding Yongchuan's suggestion. To Zhu Guanghua and Ding Yongchuan, their immediate success in Shanghai was a miracle, and they cherished it greatly. They tried very hard to make sure each performance was a success, but things became more and more difficult. First of all, with the increase of performing schedules, there was a serious shortage of actors. In that year, Ding Yongchuan's son Ding Yichen was nine years old. As he grew up with the troupe, he had learnt a lot about acting. At the time, Ding Yongchuan had moved his family to Shanghai. His wife was dealing with household matters, and his daughter was working in an electric bulb factory as a worker. Due to the shortage of actors, Ding Yongchuan had to bring his nine-year-old son to perform in the theatre. Ding Yongchuan 
，就很自然，他也不紧张，所以他演得非常好。这一下子就演红了，上海的当时的观众啊，安庆帮的安庆老乡们一下子就喜欢上了这个七岁红。当时呢，他九岁。为了宣传他更小一些，所以就叫做七岁红了。But one nine-year-old child actor was not strong enough to support the whole opera troupe. In order to solve the problem of a shortage of actors, Zhu Guanghua went back to Anqing twice to look for more talent, and he recruited a few more Wang Mei opera artists to join his troupe in Shanghai. He kept up the recruiting work, and at its peak, he had over 13 new actors in his troupe. Apart from Ding Yongchuan, the most famous Hua Dan actor was Pan Xiaozi, who started as an apprentice but exhibited great talent in playing young and lively females. Pan Xiaozi is a born in Huailin Hua Dan actor, a female Hua Dan actor. Pan Xiaozi's Hua Dan in the time, in Anqing, in Huailin, is very famous. Pan Xiaozi. 据老艺人讲，他的皮肤、身材都酷似女性，尤其装扮起来以后是非常的好看。所以当时在安庆和周边各些，他的名气很大，也迷倒了不少大嫂和小姑娘。While Zhu Guanghua and his troupe were trying very hard to prepare for their following performances, Pan Xiaozi was found missing. Pan Xiaozi, 呢，他在上海的演出，有一大批官太太和阔小姐的忠实粉丝，用现在来说就是粉丝。他们经常有潘小石出去。逛公园、打牌、吃饭，那么潘小石呢就不顾班规的约束，经常出去，有时候夜不归宿。后来一直发展到汪精卫夫人的侄女儿，是看中了潘小石，她追求潘小石，这样与潘小石私奔了。In the early Huang Mei opera troupes, there were strict rules and moral codes, and the actors generally abided by the rules. If anyone violated any of them, it would be quite unlikely for him to keep his job in the industry. One of the rules at the opera troupe was no leave without permission. Pan Xiaozi's leave was a big problem for the Shuangxi opera troupe, and they had to alter their performances accordingly. Luckily, however. Ding Yongchuan's daughter Ding Cuixia came to their rescue. Ding Yongchuan asked his daughter to quit her job at the electric bulb factory and join his opera troupe. At that point, the Shuangxi Opera had their first and only actress. Ding Cuixia became the new female lead singer of the troupe, contributing to the history of Huangmei Opera. Ding Cuixia. Is considered an actress who initiated a new style following Hu Puya. Her most successful performance was in the role of Wang Sanjie, the major female character in the traditional opera Tale of Buckwheat. Tale of Buckwheat was one of the 36 traditional Wang Mei operas. Apart from these 36 feature operas, there were 72 mini operas in the tradition. However, very few Huang Mei opera actors knew how to sing all the feature and mini operas, because in the early days, most Huang Mei opera actors were of the illiterate peasantry who learned to sing the operas through the oral instruction of their tutors. It was, of course, impossible for them to learn one entire opera by heart within just one or two days. In order to cope with the theatrical market in Shanghai, Zhu Guanghua and his opera troupe adopted the form Lian Tai Man, which meant. There would be no complete script or lyrics, but just a synopsis of the opera. The performances and lyrics had to rely upon the actors improvising. The advantage of this type of performing was that the opera could continue one day after another, very similar to soap operas in the modern TV era.
Starting from the Spring Festival of 1936, Zhu Guanghua and his opera troupe performed in many different venues, finally moving to the Taiping Lo Theatre at Taiping Chiao and the Yue Hua Lo Theatre at Xinbei Man. They performed in these two theatres for more than six months, and at their peak, they could make over 1,000 silver dollars a month. The biggest event of the year 1936 was the death of Lu Xun, one of the most famous modern Chinese writers. Tens of thousands of people in Shanghai came to the International Funeral Parlor to say farewell. Later, a popular quip served to link Lu Xun's works with Huang Mei Opera. It was said, sing Huang Mei for a while and sing Peking Opera for another while. An interesting new concept. It was based on one of Lu Xun's works, Mixed Dialects. The Shuangxi Opera Troupe became so famous that they were invited to perform at the Grand World Recreational Park. Established in 1917, the Grand World Recreational Park was run by Huang Jinrong, one of the tycoons of Shanghai. It was once the biggest entertainment venue in the city, and it was the dream of many opera actors at the time to perform in the Grand World Park. Zhu Guanghua was no exception. However, as the Shuangxi Opera Troupe had contracts with Taiping Lo Theatre and Yue Hua Lo Theatre, Zhu Guanghua was intending to wait until his contracts with these two theatres were fulfilled. However, this hesitation turned out to be the biggest regret of his life. On August the 13th, 1937, Japan initiated its attack on Shanghai. And this interrupted the performance of the Shuangxi Opera Troupe there and forced most of the actors to go back home to Anqing. Back there, Zhu Guanghua continued to run the Shuangxi Opera Troupe. More than 600 years ago, when Wen Tianxiang had passed Anqing as a prisoner of war, he wrote a poem. The storm on the way to Yichang failed to recognize me with my white hair. This poem perfectly describes 38-year-old Zhu Guanghua's feelings at the time. War had forced Huang Mei Opera, a minor opera born in the countryside of Anhui, away from the gaze of the residents of the big city of Shanghai. Fourteen years later, when the Shanghai people once again heard the beautiful singing of Huang Mei Opera, the voice belonged to a 24-year-old woman named Yan Fan Yin. Soon afterwards, the Shuangxi Opera Troupe, the most influential Huang Mei Opera Troupe in history, was disbanded, and by that time, Zhu Guanghua was already blind. Under the arrangement of the government, he went to Pengzhe County, Jiangxi Province. There he became a worker in a local Huang Mei Opera Troupe, and he worked there until the age of retirement. In 1986, 87-year-old Zhu Guanghua sang with his old and weary voice a tune from The Heavenly Match. Now, the singing reminds us of just how much he'd been through with the crests and troughs of Huang Mei Opera. <laughs> 